uh, what about the role of AFRICOM, the African Command, and particularly with regard to Somalia? Uh, well, actually, here, uh, some journalists like uh, Johan Hari of The Guardian have done a good job in exposing a large part of what actually happened in Somalia. And Somalia, as you know, we're supposed to be worried about pirates. Uh, yeah, piracy is not nice. But uh, where did it come from? Well, without going into the earlier history, as Hari and others have pointed out, one of the immediate reasons for uh, piracy is that the European Union and Saudi Arabia and a couple of others are, are simply destroying the waters of Somalia's uh, territorial waters uh, by dumping waste, uh, toxic wastes, probably nuclear wastes, and so on, and also by overfishing. Okay, what happens to the fisher? You know, the fishermen in Somalia, okay, become pirates. Uh, and then we're all upset about the piracy, you know, not about having create a, created a situation where there aren't a lot of options. And if you go back like a year or two further, you find more. So one of the great achievements of the war on terror, Bush's war on terror, was to it, which was greatly hailed in the press when it was announced, was closing down an Islamic charity, uh, al Qat, uh, which was you know, identified as, you know, supporting terrorists and so on. Okay, turned out that a couple of months later, the government kind of quietly recognized that they were wrong, and the press may have had a couple of lines about it. But meanwhile, it, it, it uh, was a major blow against Somalia. Somalia doesn't have much of an economy, but a lot of it was supported by this charity. Uh, not just giving money, but running banks and businesses and so on. It was a significant part of the economy of Somalia, closing it down, pulled the props out from under that, and is another uh, contributory factor to the breakdown in a very weak society. If you go back a couple of years beyond, you, you find more of that. So yes, there's a lot to say about Somalia way back, uh, which occasionally is said, like there are a couple of journalists who report parts of it, but not much. Uh, AFRICOM is... Uh, an expansion of the uh, global system of surveillance and control. Uh, it, the United States, it's not 1948 when the U.S. wasn't interested in Africa and was happy to hand it over to the Europeans to exploit. I mean, that's changed over the years, and AFRICOM is part of that system. It's supposedly, it's linked up to the other commands, and as I mentioned, the, the newly expanded Southcom's uh, Southern Command in Latin America is supposed to link up with it. If you read that document that I mentioned, the Air Force document, it talks about how this regional system could be linked to uh, the African Command by getting bases, say, maybe if they can get bases in, say, Recife in Brazil, it'll be closer to Africa and other bases, and then they can kind of link them up, and it'll extend the U.S. run uh, global system of surveillance and control. It's the role of Africa. Uh, what about shift of the center of empire to other parts of the world? I, I don't really see that happening in the at least short-term future for the reasons I mentioned. I mean, it's, it's a much more diverse world economically than it was, say, 50 years ago or even 30 years ago. But militarily, in terms of force, it's just completely unipolar. I mean, I mentioned some of the figures, but uh, the U.S. just dominates the whole world militarily and is helped by you know, it's Britain and other major military powers. There's just no competitor to that nexus and none seemingly arising. Oh, okay, i got to stop. Uh, <laughs>